Hey, Terry, I'm just going to take you through the steps you need to get the calendar ID and the Google API key to make the event calendar on your website connect to your Google Calendar. I'm going to go ahead and go over to the events page here, edit with Elementor. I'll show you where we'll be dropping these things in. It's pretty straightforward. I'll be starting with a calendar ID because it is by far the simpler. Um, if I select the calendar in Elementor and click the Google Calendar on the left side, that's my sample data there, you'll see I've got space for the API key and the calendar ID. So let's do the calendar ID first. Go to Google Calendar. I'm going to create a new calendar for the, for the website or for this demo video, and I recommend you do the same. Um, either a, a campaign specific calendar for just those events and keep your personal stuff separate. To do that, you click the settings menu in the top right of Google Calendar, go to settings. On the left sidebar, add calendar, create new calendar. Let's call it Terry's website. This will take just a moment. It should appear in the left sidebar when it finishes. And there it is. I'm going to click on that. First thing I'm going to do is make it public with this checkbox here. The calendar's information is visible publicly. And then I'm going to click Integrate Calendar in the submenu of Terry's website calendar. And here it is under the calendar ID. I'm just going to copy that and we'll put that right here. Whoops. Let's, uh, let's do like that. There it is, our calendar ID. That's what it should look like. All right, for the Google API, it's a little bit more complex. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back in Google Calendar first and in the Terry's website calendar. I'll create a test event so we can test this. That should do it. All right, and for the Google API, we're going to go to console.cloud.google.com. I'll send you an email with this information here. Um, it may look a little different to you when you log in, depending on the state of your Google account. You might need to authorize or uh, log into this area. But when you get here, specifically to this top bar, look for this button uh, and click here and create a new project. We're going to name it Terry. doesn't matter which name it. And it'll take a second. And this notification wheel should spin. And uh, when it's finished, you select the project. And it'll come into focus, which means that this button up here will have Terry or whatever you've named your project. If it doesn't, uh, another way you can do is just click up here and select your project. And that'll do the same thing. From here, go into this menu in the, uh, the navigation menu in the top left. Open that up. Click on APIs and Services. And you'll want to enable APIs and services with this little button here. And let's search for calendar. Google Calendar API, that's the one we want. Just click on that and enable. This will take just a moment. We're almost there. All right, from here you want to go to credentials, left sidebar and create credentials API key. All right, so here it is. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. You can select it and copy. You can just copy to clipboard with that little button there. And I'll put that right here. That's what that looks like. OK, so with these two pieces of information, we should be ready to set up our calendar. I'm going to go back over to Elementor. And I'll, uh, I'll say up front, there is a bit of a delay when it, uh, when it synchronizes. I'll paste the API key in here and the calendar ID right here. And let's see, oh, there's our test event. So there's um, another section here called data cache settings. And this is set to a default of 60 minutes. This is in between API calls. And all this means is that when you update the calendar in Google Calendar, let's say I'll add, I'll add another event here. And uh, I'll go ahead and publish and save that. Well, let's open it. TD Smith for tdpresident.com slash events. Let's open this in another tab. And you don't see the new event on the uh, 27th. And why is that? It is because data cache settings is set to synchronize with the API only every 60 minutes. It does this so you don't consume your API quota, uh, which is not a hard limit. It's just a, a frequency limit. And 60 minutes is a good balance. I recommend leaving it there. This just means it'll take about an hour to update events that you add to the calendar. 
once they're synchronizing. You can adjust this if you want. I'm gonna turn it down to zero, and um, that should, oops, I can't do zero, let's do one, let's say. And the new event will pop in because it will resummon that information. I'm gonna change it back to 60, and publish, and we should be all set. That's how you do it. Uh, get me these two pieces of information, let me know if you have any trouble with it, and I'll set this synchronization up, and uh, we'll have we'll have calendar integration, and I think that should polish it off. Thanks for watching.